All right, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about 10 principles for better street photography, including quotes from the masters themselves. And essentially, these quotes are just things that I constantly have to remind myself uh, when I go out to make photographs on the street. And my goal today is to dissect each and every one of those quotes from these masterful street photographers and kind of pull away some basic principles that you can apply to your own photography. With that said, you guys, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them later on in this video, but for now, let's jump right into it. Your first 10,000 photographs are your worst. And when I first heard this quote, I was extremely, extremely baffled because you think that the amount of you know volume you put in on a regular day of you know going out to shoot for a few hours is a lot. Well, folks, in reality, I think that's a very hypercritical mindset. Um, if you think you're going to go out every single day and make good work and come back with the most legendary images you are wrong 100%. Now, when he says your first 10,000 photographs are your worst, he's not necessarily really talking about the numerical value of 10,000. Essentially, what he's trying to tell you is you need to really clock in as many photographs, as many hours as you can. And during that process of continuously clocking and punching in with your camera, making photographs, clicking that shutter, you were going to learn a thing or two, whether you like it or not. And so this was a very, very inspirational quote for me when I first got started, because it allowed me to realize that, yeah, you know, my photographs may not be doing well right now. But if I continue and I'm consistently going out and trying to make work, and trying to get better and exploring. And even though I feel like I have surpassed 10,000 photographs, I still feel like there is a bigger goal for me to go out and capture. So it's really about volume and just going out there and trying to make good work. Photography is not about the thing photographed, it's about how that thing looks photographed. Now, kind of stumps you a little bit, right? It's not about the thing that's photographed, it's how it looks photographed. So what does that mean? Well. He's talking about subject matter. Now, my interpretation of this is actually very simple, and it's that it doesn't matter what is photographed, as long as you know how to kind of, you know, use your techniques, use your angles, you can make any photograph beautiful. And uh, I think that's what Windegrand was talking about here. You know, photography is not about the thing that's photographed, it's about how that thing looks photographed. And as photographers, you can really influence the way an image looks. If you're coming from a lower angle and, you know, someone is towering over the lens, it gives that person authority. Or if you kind of look down on a subject and, you know, they're looking up at you, you now hold the power and authority in that photograph. It, it just really depends on interpretation. And I think that's what this one comes down to. And to follow up on this, he actually has another quote that I want to include here that says, I have a burning desire to see what things look like photographed by me. And this kind of further supports my theory into what he was saying here. Everyone has different styles. Everyone approaches scenes differently. And just because, you know, somebody can make a photograph with their camera, it doesn't mean it's always going to look the same when I make the photographs. Whether I'm photographing near or far from where I live, I try to embrace a sense of discovery. Now hear me out. Have you ever felt like you photograph the same places, the same streets, the same city consistently to where you feel a little bit bored of the area? If you do, this quote should speak volumes to you. My interpretation of this is that he's trying to tell you to be very optimistic. It doesn't matter if you're photographing in Cuba or if you're photographing in your local downtown. If you continuously think that you've seen everything on that street and you lose that curiosity to kind of discover new things, to kind of have an open mind as to new things happening, naturally you're going to feel burnt out. You're going to feel very uninterested. And the way he says embrace a sense of discovery, he's trying to let you know to be optimistic. It doesn't matter if you're local or if you're far away try to always have an open mind. We can't make this stuff up every single day. Things happen and they happen differently all the time. Things change and people change. And with that said, we can't always assume that the same areas will give us the same results every single time. Now, before we move on to the next principle, I want to take a quick little break to thank our sponsor for today's episode, which are the good folks over at Squarespace. 
Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, if you're a photographer in 2024 and you want to elevate your brand to the next level, you need to create your own professional website. Now, luckily, Squarespace has you covered. With Squarespace Blueprint and SEO tools, you can choose from a ton of award-winning templates to get your website up and running within minutes. Squarespace also offers flexible payment options for your clients or customers to pay pretty much however they would like. And one of my favorite features is the e-commerce options where you can sell prints, you can sell services, you can sell absolutely anything that you'd like and have it all in one place. And if you are a photographer of any kind in 2024, you absolutely need to create your own website today. So head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys could get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. The marvels of daily life are exciting. No movie director can arrange the unexpected that you find in the street. You know, in order to be a great street photographer, you have to really be in the streets. You have to be outside. And I think when he says no movie director can arrange the unexpected that you find in the street, it's your job now as a photographer to arrange that in your own style. Be in the street, go out there and make those photographs. And Robert Duano was an exceptional master when it came to doing that. The only photographer you should compare yourself to is the one you used to be. Now, it's very competitive online, and it's only competitive if you make it competitive. I think social media has really put an emphasis on comparison. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I personally believe in in my life are like stoic values. And one of the stoic values that I hold my life to is comparison is the thief of joy. Now, when you compare yourself to other photographers, a few things can happen. One, you can be envious. You can be jealous of their success. Maybe they get more likes than you. Maybe they get opportunities that you aren't presented with. And then it makes you feel bad about your own work. And the reason why this quote made it into this list and why it's one of my principles for street photography is everyone has a different timeline. The only person you should be better than is yourself because your past self, your past photographs, your past work, are always going to be a direct reflection of who you are today. If your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. This one is actually from Robert Kappa, who was a war photographer. War photography and street photography, I don't want to say they're on the same level because, man, war photography is way more intense. You put your life on the line and, you know, you can't really compare the two. But there are very, very similar principles when it comes to reactiveness. So when I heard this quote from Robert Kappa, you know, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough, it forced me to get closer. It forced me to be uncomfortable. And when you get closer to your subject, when you get closer to scenes, you're now pulling away all of the unnecessary clutter in the backgrounds, and you're forcing your frame to be very intimate. You're putting yourself in the fire. For example, if you're photographing, let's say, uh, two people arguing out in the street when you get closer to subjects they appear a lot bigger in your frame and depending on your focal length you know these days i shoot with a 28 millimeter um, they can really accentuate the feeling of being immersed in that frame and when you feel immersed in a photograph and you can tell that story and you can use all the elements within that frame without having anything distracting it that is a very good sweet spot for being able to tell stories out on the street there is one thing that photographs must contain, the humanity of the moment. Now, when I was first getting started with street photography, Robert Frank was one of the people I would consider to be on my Mount Rushmore's. And this particular quote was exactly what I felt when I was looking at his body of work called The Americans. But one thing that really, really stood out to me about Robert Frank's work was the feeling of the photographs. How does a photograph make you feel? And it had to do a lot with his subject matter, right? The Americans, it showed kind of the civil unrest um, between segregation and showing people in a bus and the power of that, the power of documenting, the power of being able to see, you know, the story of the time. And Robert Frank, when he says, you know, the one thing the photograph must contain is the humanity of the moment. Robert Frank taught me how to photograph with objective truth. And that was to document what I see in front of me and tell the story of our time today. And, you know, as and even though I have other photographers that have been very influential and in, even though there were other photographers that I would directly correlate into developing my personal style, I think Robert Frank was the biggest inspiration for me when it came to learning how to photograph humanity and photograph with compassion and photograph with love. And you fill up the frame with feelings, energy, discovery, and risk, and leave room enough for someone else to get in there. 
This is the perfect embodiment of what a street photograph, in my opinion, speaks. You fill up the frame with feelings, right? And we just talked about feelings when it came to Robert Frank. Maybe people are happy, maybe people are angry. Energy, you know, is somebody jumping around? Are people laying down? Are people sleeping? You know, what, what's the energy of the scene? As well as risk, you know, what are we about to photograph? Is something about to happen? And finally, leave room enough for someone else to get in there. Maybe someone walking in the background, a bystander. And I know we're kind of dissecting this principle literally here, should I say quote, but my interpretation of this is you got to consider the fact that things are going to happen and it's up to you to identify each of these. Identify what feelings are in the photograph. Identify what are some of the risks that could happen. Identify if someone in the background is walking away and maybe making a funny face. All of these things are some of the best exercises you could do on the street. You know, maybe go out to the street with your camera, put it up to your eye like this. Don't make a photograph. I, I, years ago, I made a video saying the first 15 minutes that I get out on the street, I don't even make pictures. I pull my camera to my face and I just look. How do people look in my frame? Are people angry today? What's the energy of the street? How are people feeling? Is there civil unrest? And then I get to work. Everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. Excuse me, folks, this quote right here is, in my opinion, one of the biggest takeaways from today's video. But if you're going to go throughout this video and take one thing away, please, please, please take this one with you. I always felt like as a photographer, it's not our job to just click the shutter, advance the film forward. I mean, that's kind of basic. I think the photographer's job, though, is to learn how to see. You need to learn what is beautiful in your eyes and learn how to translate that into the world. And if you can figure out how to see beauty in the most mundane things, if you can figure out how to go about life and recognize something and say, wow, there's something there. Maybe I just don't necessarily feel it yet, right? I just can't put my finger on it, but there's something here. Let me, let me stick around for 10 minutes, hold my camera, just watch, and then something happens and then boom. You just made one of the most important photographs for the history of photography. This is possible. There are times where, you know, I just don't really know what's going to happen. Understand that the camera is just, according to Brisson, an instant sketchbook. You can document what's in front of you by putting four borders around a scene. And I, I try to do this all the time, right? So like my girlfriend, you know, she is the most beautiful woman on this earth. And there's times where she'll be doing something like really random, like she'll be doing her hair or something like that. And I'll just go up to her and I'll just put my hands around, you know, like a little frame. And I'll just say, wow, you're so gorgeous right now. And she'll look at me like, ah, I'm so ugly. I'm doing my hair, yada, yada, yada. Right. But I see the beauty in her. And, you know, I figure that there's so much value to just not giving up on something so quickly and kind of passing over it. You know, you need to be patient. You need to stay in that pocket. You need to figure out what you see. Because a lot of times the eyes are a little bit later than our brains. It's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Those are the 10 principles for better street photography from the masters themselves. And thank you for sticking till the very end. If you made it till the very end, comment down below, man, your favorite photography quote today. But yeah, we make street photography videos every week. So definitely subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one as always. Minolta Gang.